Hi, welcome to this next lesson in our series of learning to persist data in relational databases using Spring Boot. And in the last lesson, the first in the series, we looked at how to store a single object in a MySQL database using Spring Data um, and Java Persistence API annotations. Uh, and that was all backed up by the Hibernate ORM, or Object Relational Mapping Engine. In this lesson, we're going to go a little bit deeper and we're going to look at how we can um, structure model objects that have relationships to each other and how those relationships can be passed over to the relational database. And in particular, we're going to look at one-to-many relationships um, or relationships where one class can have several instances of another class. All right, and so in this lesson, I've actually done all the code here. Um, I want to focus on kind of talking about the different mechanisms and how they work, um, and I don't want to kind of go through the, the sort of longer process of... of um, live coding this for you as we've done in some previous lessons. I'm going to provide detailed notes for this lesson on the course page and you're also going to go through most of these um, you know most of these steps yourself in an in-class exercise. All right so what I wanted to do with this example is to create a simple one-to-many relationship. So let's open up our um, cheese model class. This is what we looked at last time and this is the class that we made persistent via some of these JPA annotations and some of the spring data annotations like entity and ID and generated value. And we configured these to work with our MySQL database and we saw how that worked to uh, allow us to, through the data access object, cheese DAO to pass data um, into the DAO which then passed on to the database and then the opposite direction to ask the DAO for object out of the database that was then passed to our application. So this was the one class we set up last time. And recall that it had a unique ID. This ID was um, given the ID annotation, which told um, um, told Hibernate that this is supposed to be a primary key in the database. It was also flagged with the generated value annotation, which said that Hibernate should generate the value of that ID for us when it's persisting our objects. And then these validations on these other fields were from um, you know previous lessons on using validation uh, in the controller to validate form data using model binding. So these didn't come up in our last lesson. These have been there for a while. All right, but there's a new property in this cheese class, which is a category. I have a category referenced right here, and indeed I have a new category class. So let's look at the category class very briefly, and then we'll see how the two relate to each other. So just like I did uh, had over in the cheese class, I have a private int ID with the IDN generated value annotations. That's going to be our unique identifier, our primary key in the database. And then there's just one other primitive field in this uh, class, which is the string name field. All right, and then down below we have um, a list of cheese objects called cheeses, uh, which has an array list implementation type. So the, the ID and the name, we've seen how those will be stored in the database because we flagged our class with the entity annotation. But this relationship between a list of cheeses and then on the other side where a cheese has a category is what I want to really focus on now. So this is a one-to-many relationship. And so for every one category, there are many cheeses that can be a part of that category. Um, in other words, there are many cheeses that can have that given category as a value of their category field. But on the other hand, there can only be one category per cheese. So um, if a cheese could have multiple categories, this would be a many-to-many -many relationship, but a cheese can only have one category, so this is a one-to-many relationship. And we would view the category as the owning class of that relationship because it's on, it's on the one side. Um, for every one category, there may be many cheeses. So in order to configure this relationship properly using the um, JPA annotations, we add the one-to-many annotation on the owning side of the relationship, in other words, on the category side. Um, so for every one category, there are many cheeses. And so we add that annotation to the cheeses field. We also um, need to add this join column annotation, and I'll um, come back to that in just one moment. But if we come back over to the cheese class, we see that our category field right here has a many to one annotation. So we need both of these references on both sides of the relationship so that Spring and Hibernate understand how these objects relate to each other during and after we uh, the, the, the point at which we put them in the database and then while we're retrieving the data out of the database, how they should be reconstituted to relate to each other properly as objects. So we need both sides of this relationship. We need many to one on the cheese side and one to many on the category side. Okay, so let's go ahead and um, just go ahead and look at the way our tables are structured now. 
and I'm going to fire up MAMP. My servers are already running. And I'm going to go to the web start page. And I've already done, uh, already run this application. So recall that when we make changes to our um, persistent model classes in Spring Boot, those changes will be um, sort of reflected in the database when we start our application for the first time after making them. And I've already done that. So when I come over to look at uh, this database and the tables that it contains, we see that I not only have a cheese table, but I also have a category table as well. Let's look, go ahead and look at the category table first. So our category table, um, it already has some data. And uh, if we look at the structure tab, that will show us the structure of uh, that table. It only has two columns within the table. The ID, which is a primary key, as indicated by that icon, and that's of integer type. And then a name, which is a varchar, which is MySQL's version of a string. And so that corresponds to, if you'll go back to uh, the class here, the category class, that corresponds to these top two fields within our, um, within our persistent class. This third field, the list, is going to be built up in a different way. It won't be stored directly in a column the way the other two fields that are um, atomic or primitive types are. Let's look at the cheese table and look at its structure. So previously we had an ID, a description, and a name on our cheese table. But now that we've set up this relationship, we also have another column called a category ID. All right. And so uh, this is configured by those inverse one to many and many to one annotations. And this is going to represent for a cheese, instead of, uh, you know, in the relational world, a cheese would have uh, a reference to a category as an object. In the relational world, that's not possible. So we store. Um, that the information that's contained in that reference by storing the unique ID of that category that is referenced by this category field. And that goes in this category ID column. And recall that this is called a foreign key. And so we see the slightly uh, more dim key icon there indicating that this category ID column is a foreign key. That means that it must correspond to, its value must correspond to the primary key um, of a, of a uh, row in the category table. Okay, so if we come back and look at these classes and just revisit this one more time, just to really hammer this home, on the many side of the one-to-many relationship, I have this many-to-one annotation, right? And so the database um, in Hibernate will uh, translate this into the category ID column right here, which will store the primary key of the given category as a foreign key on the cheese table. And then on the category side, I have to tell uh, hibernate um, that I want it to store these cheeses as a one-to-many relationship and this join column which we said we would talk about in a moment well that moments now and this join column is going to tell it which column on the cheese table um, should determine the cheeses that are a part of this list in other words if I go to look at my databases or my, my tables within my database and I wanted to for example look at a specific category and say I wanted to find all cheeses in category with ID 2, this annotation right here tells Hibernate that it should use the category ID column on the cheese table in order to determine that, and then it would find that there is indeed one cheese with category ID 2. So I need this column, this join column annotation in order for this list to be correctly populated with the associated objects that are owned by the category class, the category object. Okay, so that's how we set up our one-to-one, -one, many, sorry, one-to-many relationship just on the class side. Let's look at how this works when we're dealing with these um, things in the controller. And before we go to the controller, I just wanna show you that we again made a category DAO interface that extends CRUD, rep CRUD repository. And this is just pretty almost identical to the one we made for cheese DAO. And as we talked about last time, this interface is going to be um, available to us within our controller and Hibernate, or sorry, Spring will actually make an instance of a class that implements this interface for us, just based on the fact that we've set it up as a CRUD repository and we've given it these, um, these uh, the repository annotation to configure it. So let's go into the controllers package and open up cheese controller. So I'm not gonna really look at uh, category controller. Uh, this code will all be posted online and again with notes and you'll walk through it um, in classes and activity. But I do wanna look at cheese controller. The category controller is pretty simple. It just allows you to, um, to just create new categories. All right, at the top of my cheese controller, just like uh, last time, last time we wired up this cheese DAO 
And just like that, I'm adding a category DAO to my controller. So recall that when this code runs, when any controller code runs, this field will have a reference to an object that implements the category DAO interface. And the auto wired means that Spring Boot is going to take care of the work of creating that class, creating the object, and then injecting it into the controller. So this, this field will actually have a non-null value when our code runs because we've given it the auto wired annotation, even though we're not setting this to be equal to any specific class at any point in time, Spring Boot will do that for us. All right, so let's just go ahead and look down um, this controller and see where we've modified it to work with categories uh, on our cheese, uh, cheese class. So the first, uh, the first class here is pretty similar. Um, this is just, again, displaying the list of all cheeses in the system. I will show you one quick change that we had to make there, which was to use the category name when we're displaying it. So we took out the type enum. So previously, the, the role of category was being played by an enum that was called uh, cheese type, I believe, right? So we've removed that from our system. We're no longer using the cheese type. Uh, the benefit of that is that we can easily add categories to our system now via the user interface by using a form and adding them to the database. To change an enum, the programmer has to go in and actually add code, which is um, a much more uh, invasive and difficult process. So to display the name of the category in this table, I've just added, added the cheese.category.name. And this, again, uses getters on these classes to pull out those values. So that was the only change involved with the index method. Um, let's see. So in the display at cheese form, there was a, a change here that we made. So we want to display the list of category options when the user is creating a new cheese. So we need to um, send a list of all the available categories into the form that's going to display this uh, information. And so to get a list of all of the categories, this is very similar to what we did above and we saw in the last lesson, I can use category DAO dot find all that will return um, a list like object that that contains all the categories. So if you hover over it, it actually will show you here that it actually is going to return an iterable. So an iterable, uh, iterable is an interface that implements the behavior such that you can loop over it. All right, so it's going to it's going to look like a list for the purposes of looping at least. So the next method is the method in which I am going to process the form request to create a new cheese object. So in this one, let me go ahead and um, close this pane over here to give us a little bit more room. So in this one, I've added a new parameter to the request. So previously, the, uh, the main parameter I had here was this cheese um, object that was um, sent in via model binding. Um, here, I've added a new parameter called category ID. So let's see where that comes from in the template. We saw that when we sent in um, our categories to the template, they would be rendered in this select, right? So that's where this is happening. Our list of categories will be looped over and rendered in the select. And in particular, this select has a name, category ID. So the data that is chosen in this select dropdown is going to be sent back to the server with the property category ID. And that is going to end up, as we saw, right here in this input parameter to the process add cheese form. Request param, which says that this, this, uh, this input parameter will correspond to a value in the post request. And so um, that's how this gets uh, passed into our controller. So we want to use this category ID then to figure out which category should go on the new, cheese, the new cheese object that we're creating. Okay. So um, this is just the little code that checks for errors. And if there are errors, I basically do the same thing I did above to render the form and just kind of return. And those errors will be displayed in the appropriate place. This down here is where I'm actually going to the work of creating and uh, finishing out the creation of that um, cheese object by adding its category. In order to get the category based on the ID that was submitted and, and the category that the user selected, I use category.dao.find1 and pass in the category ID. So find1 is a method that is specified by the CRUD repository interface. And again, Spring Boot will create a class that implements that method for us. Okay, so there are a lot of methods that are part of the CRUD repository inf interface. And again, we're not going to talk about all of them, but we'll provide you references and you can look at those and, and use them as you need them. 
And so as long as this ID actually corresponds to a numeric ID of an actual category in the database, this will be a proper non-null category object. So then I can set the category of my new cheese to be that category. So the, that reference is then solidified. And then I want to add my new cheese to the, data, uh, the database by saying cheese DAO .save new cheese. So this was, this was in place last time. The adding the category in this way is uh, new code. All right, so in this remove code, there's nothing that's been changed in relation to categories. But down below, there's a new method. And let me show you what this does. Let's go ahead and start up our application. And I'll show you what this method does um, just by demonstrating it in the application first. Okay, we can go back and load our app. Okay, so in my categories controller, I have a handler in view that will display the list of all the categories. And notice if you look at the bottom left corner of my browser window, I've set up links so that each of um, these category names links to slash cheese slash category, and then it has an ID parameter in this case the hard cheese category has an ID of one. All right, so that URL is mapped into this particular handler. We see that we're up above, we've set up that this, every, uh, every handler in this controller has the cheese prefix, and then followed by that we have category. So that's the exact handler that's set up to work for these links. Let's look at what happens when I make this request. I get a list of all the cheeses in the system with that given category. In this case, there's only one. So let's look at how we made this work. Okay, so we saw that the URL has a query parameter here, id equals one. That's going to be mapped into my controller method as a request param uh, right here because this id, the name of this variable, maps to the name of this request parameter, and those match up. So when the method is called here, this will be populated with, uh, in the specific example we're looking at here, one, the id of the specific category, and so I need to use that ID to find the category in question. In other words, get the actual category object that has that ID. And so as we saw above, we can say category DAO.find1 with the numeric ID that was passed in, and that will give us the specific object um, that represents that category. That category class, category object rather, has a list of cheeses, okay? So I can say category.getCheeses, um, and that will just sort of automatically be populated because Hibernate has done the work to fetch those objects out of the database and to populate the list. So if we were to look at our category class, note that nowhere in this class do we add anything to this list, okay? This is not used in any specific way. We are not, we're never adding or taking away anything from this list at all in this class. However, it will have items within it when we use it in this way because of the mapping that was set up between these two classes. Because I said that this list should be populated by all items um, in the cheese class with this specific category ID, Hibernate will go to the work of populating that list for us when we ask for it. So when I say category.getCheeses or cat.getCheeses, as I've shortened it here, this list will indeed have all of those cheeses even though we haven't put them in there. Okay, so then I add those attributes to um, the model, and then they get rendered in the way that you just saw. And there's nothing really new or complicated about how that works, so we won't cover that in any specific detail. Okay, so um, that's how we did it. So again, we kind of we covered a lot of ground there. I'm going to uh, put notes along with this video, and you're going to go through a lot of the steps um, to create this code yourself. We really want you to get your hands dirty and get some good practice with these things. So you'll go through your, the, the steps of making this code work yourself in class, um, and uh, just to summarize, we looked at how to set up uh, relationships between our model classes, in this, in this particular case, one-to-many relationships, um, and we looked at how to translate those relationships properly to the database so that they're mapped correctly as primary keys and foreign keys, and then how to get those um, back out of the database as objects that still relate to each other even after they've been pulled back out of the database. All right, so um, yeah, that's the, the end of this lesson in Spring Data. And happy coding.